Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we received Michael to celebrate his two years of support to the show. The feed brought Medium Tentacles, Eitavesh and Thrasius List by Matei. By our patron's request, Rodrigo is on a brutal Timna and Arden Windcornless tax list. Michael brought his iteration of Crark and Silas list, Grixis Thumbs of Agony. And per request as well, Bal is trying out Inkmoth's Yeva Drogro. David is going first and Imulgan once, finding a snow-covered forest, overgrown tomb and exotic orchard for lands, with plenty of ramp, crow mox, mana vault and then arbor elves and birds of paradise, which will allow for at least a turn 2 Tevesh. Rodrigo kept his first 7 with a single scrubland but paired with a lotus petal and soul ring for ramp, skull clamp is great with Arden to kill early dorks, mother of runes for protection and two tutors in stoneforge mystic and enlightened tutor. Michael also kept his first hand with a command tower and snow-covered mountain and island. Chrome Mox and Springleaf Drum for ramp, Mystic Remora for card draw and Burgi for extra value. Finally, Ball had to Mulligan down to 6, finding a single forest but with a Sol Ring for ramp and Lotus Cobra and Earthcraft to help him mana-wise. From there, he can pivot his game plan through Whirly Tutor and Finale of Devastation. He sent Regal Force to the bottom. Ready for this match? David starts the game with an untapped Overgrown Tomb, paying 2 life. He casts his Birds of Paradise and follows it with a Chrome Mox, imprinting his Arbor Elf to be able to cast Mana Vault, and passes with 3 cards in hand. Rodrigo plays his Scrubland and casts his Sol Ring. He then casts his Lotus Petal and goes ahead casting his Stoneforge Mystic. It enters and triggers, searching for a Sword of Earth and Home, to keep finding lands and abusing the Stoneforge ETB. With his last floating mana, he still casts his Skull Clamp and passes. Michael plays a Command Tower and casts Chrome Mox, imprinting his Birgi. He then casts Mystic Remora and follows it with Springleaf Drum, ending his turn. Val plays a Forest and casts his Sol Ring, triggering Remora and not paying, before passing. David plays a Bloodstain Mire that he cracks for an Underground Sea. With that, he casts Thrasius Triton Hero and also casts his other commander, Tevesh Zad, Doom of Fools. That's some 7 mana nicely spent right there. Remora triggers and he can't pay. He upticks Tevesh right away, sacrificing his Birds of Paradise, so he is the one drawing 2 cards from it, and not Rodrigo from the Skull Clamp, attaching it through Arden. Rodrigo fails to find a land, but he still finds mana. He casts a Talisman of Hierarchy, triggering Remora and not paying, and ends his turn, passing with a Stoneforge activation up. Michael just ancestral recalled there, but found so much mana that he pays for the fish. He plays a Flood of Strand and cracks it for this awesome Phyrexian proxy of Volcanic Island. He then casts Crark the Thumbless and passes. Balan taps and ponders on tutoring for Oof to slow down this fast start, but it would eventually only benefit David, so he just plays a forest and passes, trying to adapt to this deck's mentality. David draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a tropical island and activates the Vesh, creating two thralls, and passes after that. In his end step, Rodrigo activates his Stoneforge Mystic to put his Sword of Arthan home into play before getting to his turn. He still finds no lands, so he casts Arden, Intrepid Archaeologist. He proceeds to combat, triggering him and attempting to attach Skull Clamp onto one of David's thralls, which dies, and Rodrigo draws two cards. He declares no attackers, and on his second main phase, he plays a Fatid Heath, and then casts his Mother of Runes. With the last mana, he equips Skull Clamp on his Stoneforge Mystic, ending the turn. Michael still pays for the fish to stay around. He draws, plays a Morphic Pool, and casts a Fellor Stone, passing afterwards. In his end step, Ball flashes in his commander Yeva, Nature's Herald, and proceeds to his turn. He draws and casts a Mana Crypt, triggering Remora, which he can't pay for. He then goes to combat and attacks Tevesh with Yeva, which is promptly blocked by a Thrall. In the second main phase, Ball casts Earthcraft, triggering Remora and not paying. However, to his dismay, David responds with a Mana Drain, hoping to bank in on some mana. Remora triggers and he doesn't pay. We're back to David's turn, he draws, takes one from the vault and gains two colorless mana from the Mana Drain. He plays an exotic orchard and casts an elvish mystic. He then casts his time twister, which was what he had planned all along, exhaust his hand as much as possible and then refill. Remora triggers and he can't pay. In response, however, Michael casts a swan song, triggering Crark and it's bounced back to his hand, so he casts it once again, triggering Crark and bounced once more. However, despite being tapped out, Michael still has a fierce guardianship available. So without contesting, David assumes the spell gets countered for good after a couple of rolls. David then upticks the Vash, creating two thralls and passes the turn. Rodrigo gets to his turn and equips the sword to Arden manually. Proceeding to combat, Arden triggers, attaching Skullclamp to the Elvish Mystic, successfully killing it and drawing two cards. 
Michael pleads for his life total, claiming he is not on Naus. So Rodrigo attacks Baal with Arden, connecting and triggering his sword to exile his Stoneforge mystic and searching his library for his planes, and putting them both into play, triggering Stoneforge once again and searches for Lucille into his hand. In his second main phase, he plays a prismatic vista and cracks it for his swamp, to then tap out for a wandering archaic, ending his turn. Michael untaps and once again pays for his fish to stay. He's happy looking at the game so far, so he plays his snow covered island and casts a dockside extortionist. Everyone passes priority and it enters, creating 8 treasures. With so much mana, he's not done just yet, and he casts a Praetor's Grasp, targeting the vid with it. Quark triggers and so does Archaic, and he pays for it, so Rodrigo doesn't get to copy it. He rolls and gets to copy the Praetor's Grasp, also targeting the vid, so a Thoracle win could be imminent. With this in mind, the vid responds with an offer you can't refuse, triggering Archaic and Remora, and it doesn't pay, so Michael draws. He also doesn't pay for the Archaic, hoping some teamwork might slow down Michael and Rodrigo copies it, targeting the other grasp. In response, Michael casts his Swan Song, triggering Crark and Archaic, and he pays for it. Then, Crark's roll comes positive and he copies it, although, after some pondering, he sends both Swan Songs towards the same offer you can't refuse, so this way he gets one Praetor's Grasp and gains two treasures back. He grasps the vid for a Phantasmal Image, which he casts right away, entering as a copy of a Dockside Extortionist, for another 8 treasures. With his 10 total treasures, he casts 3 to cast Veyron Voice of Duality and passes, with plenty of mana up as well as a deadly plan. In his end step, Bal casts Fierce Empath, wishing the deck would run Bane of Progress. It enters and he searches for a Woodland Bellower, to have his options open, be it reactively or proactively. He gets to his turn and loses his crit roll, taking 3. He draws and goes to combat right away, sending Yeva towards the Vesh, and David jumps into the Thrall. Without land drops or non-creature spells to cast, he passes. David draws and takes one from the Vault. He updicks the Vesh, sacrificing a Thrall, and then plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He follows that with a Dothy Voidwalker, and Michael responds to it with an Entomb, while he still can get stuff into his graveyard, before becoming a useless card. Crack triggers twice due to Veyron and Archaic also triggers, and he doesn't pay, so Rodrigo takes the opportunity to thin down his deck, entombing a polluted delta. The first Crack trigger sends a spell to hand, and the second one copies it, so he entombs a Sakashima of a thousand faces. He repeats this process, and Rodrigo entombs a Gemstone Caverns, while the double Crack triggers repeat their outcome, copy and bounce, therefore entombing Stormkill Artist. Michael goes at it again, and Rodrigo entombs a Bloodstained Mire. This time, though, both Crack Triggers fail, so Michael spends another treasure to cast in Tomb again. Rodrigo now searches for a Basri Cat, as he wouldn't want to draw into it now. Crack says yes and no again, and Michael entombs Crack's thumb, before going for it one last time. Rodrigo entombs a Flooded Strand, and then Crack once again copies and bounces, allowing Michael to entomb Brain Freeze as his last response, being left with two treasures. Voidwalker finally resolves, and David passes. Rodrigo untaps, and on his upkeep, he casts an Enlightened Tutor, triggering Remora and not paying, and it does resolve, while Rodrigo ponders for a second on a rule of law, the potential to remove so many of Michael's win cons through Rest in Peace outweighs any rule of law effect at the moment. He draws it and casts it, triggering Remora once again and unable to pay, but to much of Michael's disapproval, it resolves. He then goes into combat and Arden triggers, and he attaches Skull Clamp on Baal's Fierce Empath, killing it, but due to Rest in Peace, it is exiled instead and therefore he doesn't get to draw cards. Sequencing 100. He then attacks Baal with Arden and Tevesh with Archaic, and before blockers he activates Mother of Runes to provide Wandering Archaic protection from blue, in order to get some damage through to Tevesh. Baal is missing one land to attempt to go off in his next turn, and rather not gamble on the top deck, so he goes for the long and conservative play to flash in Woodland Bellower, entering and triggering to search for a Manglehorn, which enters play and targets the sword, which enables the possibility of blocking Arden and slowing down Rodrigo's rampant board state power. In his second main phase, Rodrigo casts Sanctum Prelate, entering and choosing two, mostly wanting to shut down any incoming Cyclonic Rift. We're back to Michael's upkeep, and as he counts his mana sources, players start anticipating his paying for the Remora, and he does indeed, especially since he entombed most of his one cons. He wants to dig for a way out. He plays a Snow Mountain and casts Harmonic Prodigy, and he just got himself three cracks now. Bell and taps and once again loses his script roll. Still no lands to be found, and he feels the imminent beatdown from Rodrigo, so he preemptively attacks him for 12, hoping to be able to win the race in case swings start coming from both sides. He passes, and on his end step, David activates Thrasius, scrying it to the top and revealing an Imperial Seal. David gets to his turn, draws, and takes one from the vault. He casts his Imperial Seal right away, 
treating Archaic and Remora and not paying for either. Rodrigo does decide to copy it, but in response, Michael fires a mental misstep at the original seal. Crack triggers three times and Archaic also triggers, and he does pay for it. The first Crack roll bounces the spell to his hand, the second one is copied and he changes the target to Rodrigo's Imp seal, while the third roll also bounces the spell. This way, Michael recasts his mental misstep once again, targeting David's Imp seal, triggering Crack three times and Archaic as well. Now, he doesn't pay, as Rodrigo could want to copy it and also help stop David. Rodrigo, however, doesn't copy it, as any failed rolls would slowly decrease Michael's life for each misstep cast. Michael rolls for the crack triggers and he gets one copy, then two copies and then a third copy, countering the spell but losing access to his mental misstep. David then upticks the Vesh, creating two thralls and passes the turn. Rodrigo draws and then casts his commander, Timna the Weaver, proceeding to combat. He attacks Baal with Wandering Archaic and he takes it. In his second main phase, Timna triggers and he pays one life to draw a card. He plays an isolated chapel and casts a Dream Stealer, ending his turn. Michael untaps and once again he's happy with his Zoo Doristic study, so he pays for the Dumar to stay. He plays in Verdant Catacombs and cracks it for a Badlands, passing right after. In his end step, Bal casts a Whirly Tutor, triggering Archaic and Remora, and he doesn't pay for the fish, but pays for the Archaic. However, Michael responds with a Flusterstorm, triggering Crack three times as well as Archaic, and he doesn't pay, so Rodrigo copies it also pointing it at the Tutor. And Bal doesn't even fight for it anymore. Then the first crack rolls comes positive, the second one is also positive, and the third one bounces itself to his hand. Bal still casts a Finorn Elves in the end step and proceeds to his turn. He untaps and wins the crit roll this time. Rodrigo and Bal discuss the pressure that can be dealt to Tevesh, and eventually, with Rodrigo's Timna out, Bal prefers not to attack Tevesh as he would be doing Rodrigo a favor, as well as keeping blockers for Timna, so he just passes. In his end step, David activates Razius, scrying to the bottom and revealing an Elves of Deep Shadow, before going to his turn. He draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a Wooded Foothills and writes another one on the Metro Club, as he cracks it and mistakenly searches for an untapped watery grave. Everyone was chatting around and didn't notice it, but it didn't change the outcome of the game. He then activates the Vesh, sacrificing a troll, and draws two cards. He casts a Carpet of Flowers, treating Remora and not paying. He goes to his second main phase, adding double green with carpet to cast his Elves of Deep Shadow, ending his turn. In his end step still, Rodrigo activates Stoneforge Mystic to put Lucille into play, and proceeds to his turn. He recasts Arden for 5 mana and proceeds to combat, triggering him and attaching Lucille and Skullclan to his Dream Stealer. He then attacks Michael with Dream Stealer and Tevesh with Wandering Archaic. Lucille triggers and Michael sacrifices the Phantasmal Image Dockside, providing a zombie to Rodrigo. Still before blockers, Rodrigo activates Mother of Runes to give Dream Stealer protection from red in order to get the damage to connect, triggering Dream Stealer so Michael is forced to discard 4 cards from the 8 he had in hand. David just jump blocks Archaic and on Rodrigo's second main phase, Timma triggers and he pays 1 life to draw a card. Rodrigo then plays a Mikakoro Center of the Sea, which messes with David's current plans. He finishes his turn with an Esper Sentinel that enters pay tapped. Michael took a blow to his hand, so he once again pays for the Remora's upkeep trigger, still sound with 5 extra mana. He plays his Scalding Tarn and cracks it for the tap Blood Crypt, to avoid providing more mana for David's carpet. He just passes, and on his end step, Paul Hart casts a Force of Vigor, targeting Lucille and Skullclamp. Archaic, Esper Sentinel and Remora all trigger, and he can pay for the fish. Pays for the Sentinel, but not for Archaic, hoping Rodrigo would help clear some stuff from the board. Rodrigo copies it and targets Carpet of Flowers and Mystic Remora with it, and in response to the copy, Michael casts his Flusterstorm, triggering Crack three times, as well as Archaic and Sentinel, and he pays for the Sentinel, but not for Archaic, which Rodrigo copies and points towards Baal's Force of Vigor. He does have two open mana, but he just lets it get countered and exiles it to Dothy Void Walker instead of Rest in Peace, expecting the Vid would want some removal as well. First Crack Trigger then bounces the spell, and the other two copy it so Rodrigo's copied force is countered as well. With the last floating mana, Bal casts his Lotus Cobra, hoping to finally hit some lands. He doesn't, however, he once again loses his crit roll, and he ponders on attacks and sends Woodland Beller towards the Vesh, to try to have David's board slightly under control, with the help of Rodrigo. In his end step, David activates Thrasius, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Gemstone Caverns into play. He gets to his turn, draws and takes one from the vault. He adds double green from carpet and then cracks the Dothy Void Walker to cast the Force of Vigor, targeting Lucille and Skullclamp, hoping to be able to populate the board with thralls. Archaic, Sentinel and Remora trigger, and he doesn't pay for the fish, pays for the Sentinel but not for the Archaic, so Rodrigo copies it and targets Mystic Remora and Balsol Ring. 
In response, Michael casts a deflecting swat, targeting the copied force. Quark triggers three times as well as Archaic and Sentinel, which he doesn't pay and Rodrigo draws a card, but he pays for the Archaic, so Rodrigo doesn't get to copy it. Quark's first trigger copies it, second one also copies it, and the third one sends it back to his hand, so he changes the targets of Rodrigo's Force of Vigor to become Esper Sentinel and Ball Soul Ring, which Ball taps in response. The stack clears as well as some of the permanents on the board, and then David plays a waterlogged growth that he cracks right away to draw a card. He then activates the Vesh to create two more thralls and then attempts to pass the turn. Ball then spends his floating mana to flash in Timur Sabertooth, and on David's end step, after probing player's hand sizes, Rodrigo activates Mikokoro for everyone to draw a card. He gets to his turn and goes to combat right away, sending one archaic towards the Vesh, Zombie and Arden towards David, hoping to draw some cards and Dream Stealer towards Ball holding priority and activating Mother of Runes to give him protection from green. Before blockers, Michael casts a free submerge, targeting one of the trolls, triggering crack three times and archaic as well, and he doesn't pay, so Rodrigo copies it and targets Strazis with it. David is in a tight spot due to prelate, so activates Strazis once, looking for something, especially because Michael could potentially bounce everyone's board at this moment. He scries to the bottom and reveals a Mox Diamond. David then lets it resolve and puts Strazis in the command zone instead. First Quark Trigger now bounces the spell back to hand, the second one copies it and it targets the same throw, while the last one also bounces it back to his hand. Michael then casts a merge once again and targets the other throw, triggering Quark three times and Archaic as well, unable to pay though, so Rodrigo copies it and targets Quark. In response, Michael casts a deflecting swat on the copy, triggering Quark three times and Archaic once again. In response to the Archaic trigger, Michael cracks his last treasure to cast a Dark Ritual. Once again, three more card triggers and Archaic as well, which he can't pay, and Rodrigo gains three black mana. However, in response, David channels an Ottawa is soaring city on Krark, now that most of Michael's interaction is on the stack. It effectively saves the board from being bounced, and then Michael rolls for the Krark triggers, being copied three times, gaining 12 black mana and losing access to the ritual. With that mana, he pays for the Archaic trigger. He then rolls for Crack once again, copying it, bouncing it back to hand and then copying it once again, so he changes the target of Rodrigo's copied Submerge onto Rodrigo's one in Archaic. Now, Submerge's Crack triggers Resolve and the first one bounces it. The second one copies it and he targets Timno with it, which Rodrigo puts back in the command zone, and the last one also bounces it. Finally, players declare no blockers and Dream Stealer triggers, so Ball discards a Thorn of Amethyst. Rodrigo then gets to his second win phase and plays an OG a Ganjo Castle. After that, he casts a Gideon of the Trials, further messing with David's historical plans. Remora triggers and he doesn't pay. He then activates it to create its emblem, so he can't lose the game and its opponents can't win the game. As his last spell, he casts a Rule of Law, triggering Remora and not paying, ending his turn. Michael untaps and once again pays for his fish to stay. So far, players have been feeding him properly, so why not? He plays a Bloodstained Mire and recasts his commander, Krark, ending his turn. On his end step, Ball flashes in a Reclamation Sage, a bit unsure what to take out now, and going for David's Carpet of Flowers. He once again loses his crit roll, and draws no lands, so he goes to combat and attacks the Vash with three creatures, hoping to get some damage in, and he does. In his second main phase, he casts a Finale of Devastation X equals 1, which he was saving for Ashaya, but just lost 2 mana, so he can't get it anytime soon. Remora triggers and he can't pay, and Michael responds to it with his Fluster Storm triggering Storm and Quark three times. First one bounces it, second one also bounces it, and the third one does copy it, so it is countered. With the two floating mana, he bounces Woodland Bellower to his hand with the Sabertooth, hoping to get more value from it next turn cycle. We're back to David, he draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a Windswept Teeth and recasts Thrasius, and then upticks the Vash for two thralls, passing afterwards. In his end step, Rodrigo activates Mi Kokoro for everyone to draw a card. Then, Michael cracks his Bloodstained Mire for an Underground Sea, and then casts a Mystical Tutor, triggering Crack three times. First one copies it, and he shortcuts the other two rolls, which are both bounced. He gets a Slaughter Pack to the top, hoping to eventually get rid of Sanctum Prelate to fire a Psychrift. Rodrigo then gets to his turn and is desperately hoping to find Elishnorn to start finishing this match, so he activates Mi Kokoro right away. He just finds a command tower, that he plays, and then recasts his Wandering Archaic. He now activates Gideon, turning it into a creature until end of turn and attacking Michael with him. He sends his other three creatures towards David, who simply jumps Arden with Thrasius. Dream Stealer triggers and David discards a Mox Diamond, just after Rodrigo passes the turn. Michael untaps and still pays 8 for his Remora. He plays a Wooded Foothills and cracks it for an untapped Steam Vents, paying 2 life. 
He casts a Senses Divining Top as a spell for the turn and passes. Val keeps up with his regular turns, taking 3 from the crypt and finding no lands, so he goes to combat and attacks Michael with a Sabertooth, hoping to bring out some interaction. And he does, as Michael responds with a Submerge on it, triggering Crack 3 times and Archaic, but he pays for it. So the first Crack roll bounces it to hand, the second one copies it and he chooses the same target for the copy, and the last one bounces it to hand. Bal then goes to his second main phase and despite Timur Sabertooth being on top, he casts a Green Sun Zenith, X equals 1, triggering Archaic and Remora and not paying for either, as Rodrigo has no green creatures to tutor. A bit tired of getting his stuff countered by Michael, he searches for an Allosaur Shepherd, which can also help put some pressure eventually. On his end step, David activates Thrasius, scrying to the bottom and revealing an Oko Thief of Crowns. He still cracks the Windswept Teeth for a tapped Breeding Pool and goes to his turn. He draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a command tower and casts his Oko, triggering Remora and not paying. It resolves and then he upticks it on Crack, hoping to end this coin flip shenanigans. However, Michael responds with his Deflecting Swat, triggering Crack three times and Archaic, and he doesn't pay, so Rodrigo copies it and changes the target of the original Swat to his copy. Then, the first Crack rolls bounces it back to hand, the second one copies it and changes the target from the Oko activation to target Wandering Archaic to become an Elk. Then, the third one bounces it back to hand. In response, Rodrigo activates his Mother of Runes to provide Archaic protection from blue. David then activates his Tevesh to sacrifice one of his trolls to draw two cards and end his turn, discarding two useless cards at cleanup. Rodrigo gets to his turn and once again goes for the main phase Mikokoro activation. In response, Michael casts his Mystical Tutor, triggering Crack three times and Archaic, and he can't pay for it, so Rodrigo searches for his Steel Shaper's Gift. Michael then rolls and Crack says no. It says no once again, and even in the third trigger, he doesn't want Michael to have his tutor resolve. Still in response, Michael activates his Senses Top as he can't cast any more spells, and Mikokoro's ability resolves. Rodrigo then casts his Steel Shepherd's Gift, triggering Remora and not paying, and he searches for his Sword of Fire Nice Ice to his hand, which he puts it into play with a Stoneforge Mystic activation. He then activates Gideon to transform it into a creature and then proceeds to combat, triggering Arden and attaches Sword of Fire Nice Ice to Dream Stealer, attacking Michael with him and his other four creatures attack Tevesh. David jumps Gideon with a Thrall and Arden with his Thrasius, managing to save his Tevesh. Sword of Iron Nice and Dream Stealer trigger. Michael discards three cards and Rodrigo deals two damage to Krark and draws a card before passing the turn. Michael untaps and still pays nine mana for his Remora to stay, as he has plenty of mana in hand still and not much else to do. He draws and casts a Spell Seeker, entering and searching for a Cyclonic Crest to his hand. He then wants to end his turn and on his end step, Bell flashes in a Shaman of Forgotten Ways, finally finding some mana. David then casts a Shen of Vapor on Sanctum Prelate, triggering Archaic and Remora, and not paying for the fish, but paying for the Archaic. In response, Rodrigo activates his Mother of Runes, giving the Prelate protection from blue. Finally, at cleanup step, Michael discards to hand size. Balan taps and for once he wins his Crypt Roll. He attacks Oko with his Yeva and Manglehorn, which David jumps with his Thrasius. In his second main phase, he casts a Concordant Crossroads and passes, but on his end step, David flashes in an Endurance to pressure Gideon. David draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a Polluted Delta and searches for a Bayou. He then goes to combat and attacks Gideon with Endurance. He either takes down one stack's piece or the other, which is Sanctum Prelate, but Rodrigo does not block and lets Gideon rest in peace. In his second main phase, he activates the Vesh for two thralls, and with the Rule of Law preventing him from winning, he casts Eldritch Evolution sacrificing Endurance as an additional cost, triggering Archaic and Remora, and he doesn't pay for Remora but pays for the Archaic. He searches for a Seedborn Muse and then activates Oko, targeting Mother of Runes to become an Elk, hoping his Oko survives a turn cycle. He then activates Thrasius, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Gilded Drake, passing afterwards. In his end step, Ball flashes in a Woodland Bellower, entering and searching for a Circle of Dreams Druid to play. Rodrigo gets to his turn and jumps to combat straight away, he sends Dreamstealer once again towards Michael and Wandering Archaic towards David's life directly. The Vision blocks with a Thrall and Michael takes the damage, triggering Dreamstealer and Sword of Fire Nice, and he deals 2 damage to Oko and draws a card, and Michael discards 3 cards. In his second main phase, Ryu casts Liliana Waker of the Dead, triggering Remora and not paying. He upticks her and everyone discards a card. He then passes priority and on his end step, David activates Thrasius once, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Force of Negation. He does it again, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Sylvan Library, and one last time scrying to the bottom and revealing his own Cyclonic Rift. With another round of priority, Michael casts his Free Submerge on Sanctum Prelate, triggering Archaic and he can't pay, so Rodrigo copies it and targets Seedborn Muse. 
Now, the vid is about to cast, he's recently drawn Force of Negation, and Ball mentions to the table that Seedborn Muse will not see another untapped step, so he advises the vid to save his fawn for Michael's Cyclonic Rift, instead of wasting it on this submerge, and the vid follows his advice, as rule of law is making things hard for everyone to interact in the stack. Both submerges resolve and we're back to Michael's turn. He untaps and finally lets the fish go. It's been over four and a half hours and players feel like an eternity has passed since Remora hit play. Michael goes ahead with the Cyclonic Rift, freeing an Archaic and paying for it, but as expected, the vid casts his Force of Negation, pitching a Gilded Drake. Michael passes and on his end step, Ball flashes in an Argothian Elder and proceeds to his turn. He untaps and wins the Crypt Roll. After 14 draws, he finally finds a land, a Dryad Arbor, which he plays, triggering a Lotus Cobra for one green mana. Pondering his options, he casts Ovenwall Tracker and then uses Circle of Dreams Druid to make Dryad Arbor fight the Thrall and with the last floating mana, he activates Shaman of the Forgotten Ways to get access to Biorhythm, hoping to kill the vid now as the Cyclonic Rift is imminent, and hoping to survive Rodrigo's board. Michael responds with a Vampiri Tutor, as he is about to lose life regardless. Archaic triggers and he pays for it, since an Elish Norn from Rodrigo could mean the game. He searches for a Fireball to perhaps kill some more players, and then Ball proceeds to combat, sending three creatures towards the vid as he still has the possibility of baby rifting. The vid is the first casualty at nearly the 5 hour mark, and in Ball's end step, Rodrigo flashes in Avon Mind Sensor. Rodrigo gets to his turn, and finally, with his own Sanctum Prelate out of the way, he is able to overload Winds of Abandon. In response, Ball untaps his two lands and floats mana with Dryad and Finorn Elves. But due to Avon Mind Sensor, players only search their top 4 cards in the library, and they fail to find. Rodrigo then upticks Liliana, and since Ball is Hellbent, he loses 3 life. Rodrigo wants to go to combat and Ball doesn't even bother flashing in his Yeva, accepting his demise as Rodrigo spreads the love between Ball and Michael, taking the game. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone, this was a crazy long match with Mystic Remora sitting there for 10 turns, while everyone was slowly attempting to deal with the Vid's Tavesh. Arden and Rodrigo Swords plus Lucille played a major role in policing the board, while also providing the Orge of deck some good advantage. Wandering Archaic was also key, placing a major stacks on most every spell. Ball having to rely mostly on artifact mana prevented him from going for an earlier oof, and the public information of two Cyclonic Rifts created an interesting stalemate. Eventually, Shaman of the Forgotten Ways seemed to be a good way out, but Winds of the Abandoned had been waiting to be cast for several turns. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TG Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Dragon Hellscat, V, RJ, Heated Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katerina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked, and Xenon, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!